What's up, everyone? I know it's been a while. Welcome back to the Outside the Box Income and Investing Podcast. Today, we have the number one clinical mentor for ACL rehab in the PT space, John Call. We're going to have a conversation. He's been one of my clients for a while in my coaching program, has absolutely dominated the space as far as going and making communities for clinical mentorship all the way to a course that is now CEUs and a few other things. We're going to talk about all that today. So why don't you go ahead and start with your story, John? First of all, thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Excited to spread the good word and you know talk to everybody here. So my name is John Call. Obviously, I am a sports physical therapist. I do specialize in ACL rehab, and I always had a passion for helping others and really giving that education and that mentorship to help other physical therapists who want to pursue sports physical therapy and also specialize in ACL rehab. And I want to be that guide for them to help them boost their career and accelerate their career, build their personal brand, build their own business, and get the results that their athletes deserve. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the problem and kind of why I chose to specialize in ACL rehab. So, I mean, we as a healthcare system, and especially in the sports medicine world, we're really experiencing an ACL epidemic. Uh, just to give some quick numbers, there's approximately 200,000 to 250,000 ACL injuries in the United States per year that result in about 150,000 surgeries per year in the United States. And these numbers have been rising over the past decade. So it's pretty alarming. And getting into the why behind this is definitely a topic for another day, as there's multiple factors involved here and no true consensus. But regardless, the satisfaction and return to sport rates are not great at all. So some quick statistics here from the research. So 84% of non-professional athletes thought that they would be back to sports within a year after ACL surgery, but only 24% of them achieved this goal. So that's pretty alarming. And that's not to say that these people don't get back, but within that year frame, only a handful of them are getting back to sport. Re-rupture rates are as high as 40%. That means four out of every 10 people who get an ACL surgery are going to re-rupture. And not to mention that the contralateral knee, the injury risk significantly increases as well. So we not only have to worry about the reconstructed knee, but also the other knee. So we have a really high re-injury rate. And what's even worse is that there's a recent meta-analysis that actually showed that only 23% of these patients pass a necessary return to sport goals. And I know there's a massive amount of PTs out there that have no idea what a return to sport testing battery encompasses. And again, not always their fault. School doesn't really prepare us for this, but we clearly have a problem here. And I think a lot of the burden rests on us as sports PTs. So this is where I kind of come in to help you others. And I've created a course, which we can dive a little bit more into, as well as a mentorship. So I want to ask you a question. You say that people come out of school not prepared. I know when I went to PT school, I learned some return to sport tests. And at that time, I think it was maybe year one of the program, but it was never re-emphasized ever again. And then when I was in clinic with athletes, we were doing things completely different. Do you have some basic or you know top three, top five tests that you recommend people do for return to sport? Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, what you get in school is the tip of the iceberg. And some schools are better than others where you might get a really good professor where they actually, you know, specialize in sports and, you know, really dive a little bit deeper, but you're really getting the tip of the iceberg here. And as you get out of school, you're going to learn a lot more. So Brandon, like you said, there's definitely a lot of things that you learn in the field from mentors who specialize in this and taking good quality resources. So, I mean, a good return to sport testing battery, there's definitely a, like a bunch of things you have to look at, but the biggest one I mean, shouldn't say the biggest one. The biggest ones that I would absolutely say, you want to make sure that the joint has full motion. And I can't tell you because I'm an independent re return to sport tester. So I see a lot of patients that come to me for clearance to return to sport where I haven't been doing the rehab. So it's the first time I'm seeing them. And I can't tell you how many times they don't even have full knee extension, right? They're, they're missing like five, 10 degrees. And this is a big, huge issue. And this is just trickles down the line here. So we want to make sure that we're looking at orthopedic basics because a lot of times those boxes are not checked, which is very alarming. So full range of motion, no joint swelling. Then we want to make sure we do a strength test, a formal strength test. Quadriceps strength is an absolute critical fact. You have to be measuring this objectively with a dynamometer, with an isokinetic test if you have that resource or have someone that can do that for you. But strength has to be assessed one way or another. That's an absolute must. Quads are the biggest one. Hamstrings are also important. Hip abductors are important as well. We want to look at a battery of jumping tests. So your classic hop tests are not super great, 
although I think they're somewhat valuable, you can still do them, but you have to include a vertical jump assessment on one leg. We need to be looking at not only how high they jump, but also the quality and the motor strategies that they're using. So a vertical jump assessment is absolutely critical because it's going to expose knee extensor functional deficits better than any sort of horizontal hopping, but definitely include a battery of those. And you want to include a cutting type test. So like the T test, the pro agility test, you want to include some form of psychological readiness. That's an absolute must. So you giving them something an outcome measure like the ACL RSI is a really, really good one because it's getting into the mind of the patient to see if they're actually truly ready been prepared mentally to get back onto the field. So that's another big one. I like to do conditioning tests because, you know, all these things are great, but if you don't have sports specific conditioning and you have a very small gas tank after months of not participating in your sport, your risk of injury is definitely going to increase. And I also like to include some sort of neurocognitive training or a neurocognitive assessment along with that as well. All right. So I know when you started working with me, you kind of built your community before you had your course and other things. Do you feel there is a huge need for your mentorship? And is that why your community grew so quickly? Yeah, I really do. And coming from myself, who's really kind of dedicated my career towards sports rehab, but also ACL specific, I really feel that there's this need. So we see these statistics that I highlighted before. And, you know, I think the burden of these stats really rest on us as physical therapists, because we by far spend the most time with our patients. The, me the best surgery means absolutely nothing without top-notch rehab, right? So we're spending the most time, and I really think this is ACL rehab in specific, but also sports in general, is, is truly a specialty. We have to know, you know, your milestones, your performance criteria, programming at all these different stages of rehab, clinical decision-making rules, plyometrics, running, sprinting, resistance training, you name it. We have to kind of know all that stuff. And, um, you know, if we don't, we're kind of leaving our – our results and our patients' results to chance here. Not only their results, but their health. Um, and I, I kind of always compare it to this. If someone came to me with a pelvic health issue, could I give them something that might be somewhat helpful? Sure, I might be able to get them somewhat along the right track, but I would be doing them an injustice. And I would send them to someone who specializes in pelvic health. And if it were my goal to actually be a, a pelvic health specialist, I would improve my skill set in this area through quality resources and mentorship. And ACLs are no different. So when people work with you, are they mostly working for somebody else? Are they kind of self-employed? Are they running their own business? What do you know? There's people that want to be good with AC, want to be good with ACL rehab. Like what's the typical person? What does this look like? Great question. So I do get a pretty wide variety where we have physical therapists that are working in general outpatient clinics where they happen to see a decent amount of ACLs or they're in a general outpatient clinic and they know they have a passion for treating ACLs but they're not seeing a whole lot of them yet. And they want to make a name for themselves to really get their name out there. I also have a few business owners that, you know, do cash-based physical therapy or may do virtual physical therapy who want to uh, really help ACLers and, you know, carve their niche and build their personal brand around that. So people from, you know, general outpatient clinics to people who are doing their own thing and their own businesses are the people that I, that I help. All right. So do you have a specific preference or anyone from any of those categories can work with you? Uh, anyone who really has that passion and is, you know, willing to put in the work and invest because I think that is a big barrier to a lot of uh, potential, you know, mentees of mine is the fear of investing. Right. So I feel like we get caught up in a brand and I feel like you can definitely relate to this as a business coach. People get caught up in this short-term mindset where it's like, okay, what is it going to cost me now? And they totally lose sight of, no, this is an investment. You putting forward whatever resource it is now, time, money, effort, whatever it is, but it's going to pay multiple dividends in the future. So I feel like that's a big shortcoming. And I do have um, a couple people in my mentorship group that can attest to that, where they were definitely hesitant to take my course, to take my mentorship uh, platform, to join the Discord because they just didn't want to take that next step. And they were, had this, you know, some uncertainty and then they were a little bit nervous. But now through, you know, their results and also through reviews that they've given me that they have are more than happy and some of them wish they would have started a little bit earlier. Okay, so you don't have to say their names, but do you have an example of someone that like knew nothing and is now doing incredibly well with ACL rehab? You walk through that process if you have anyone like that. 
Yeah, so um, I actually have someone in my mentorship group who went through an ACL surgery themselves. And as a PT, it was very eye-opening to them. And they realized how poor standard of care is for ACL rehab. So they sought out an expert to help do the rehab. It wasn't myself, but they're in my group, right? So they're in my group to learn about ACL rehab. But they were getting treatment from another specialist and they wanted to be that specialist and they wanted to improve their skill set because they wanted to make sure that the standard of care is elevated where they are. So this doesn't happen to other people. And now, like I said, they're doing great. And they they actually open their own business uh, online virtually to help ACL athletes and ACL patients going through this. Okay. So you can really help anyone. And additionally, do you think you'll be patient facing in the future? Or are you patient facing now? Yes, I'm currently patient facing now, um, carving out my niche, you know, as you know, one of these go to people in my area for ACL rehab, especially as an independent tester, and when things go wrong. So I do get a lot of cases where, you know, these ACLers have been mismanaged, if you will, or they've been seeing, you know, whatever, whoever it is, someone who doesn't really specialize in this injury, and they've been seeing them for months, and now they're behind. And now they're, you know, their surgeons unhappy, or they're unhappy, and they're looking for help. So I do see um, a lot of patients like that in person, but I also, through my platform, ACLRX, I do virtual rehab as well, where I just pretty much do virtual training for patients with ACL injury. If you're not teaching that, you start teaching it to your clients, just an FYI, it's how they go virtual <laughs> facing. If you're not teaching it yet, start doing so. That all being said, did you do a fellowship or residency, anything out of school? I did not. Okay. And, you know, this is what I tell people who are on the fence about joining the mentorship. I did not do anything formal, but what I did do, I knew that I was a avid learner and I like to do a lot of self-learning, a lot of self-reading, which helps, but I wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't, wasn't having good quality mentors of myself. So I wanted to give back because I saw how valuable it was to have good quality mentors right from the jump out of school because I was able to do things a lot quicker and get to the point that they were much faster than they did because they were teaching me, you know, the mistakes they made, the trial and error. They were giving me those clinical pearls and things like that. So I wanted to be that mentor for other people to help them accelerate their career. And that's something I just asked that question because some people will be like, oh, you didn't do X, Y, and Z. But at the end of the day, you've grown the community. You've helped people. You have a patient-facing business. A lot of people that do residencies don't do that. So it's something where like, you know, you are having things other people don't have right now. So if they want those things, I highly recommend they work with you. And the reason I harp on this um, is just because my wife has an MBA and she's an emergency physician as a resident right now. And it's something where like, as a resident, she's not learning much. She's just being abused by the hospital. I'm pretty sure that PT is the same way with residency, you know, let's underpay you and abuse you, right? But it's something with business principles and other things too. Um, the pipeline from school is basically to be an employee. It's not to become, you know, an expert in your field where then you can become self-employed and a business owner, as you know, I talk about these things. So something where I think that just seeing your transition from you started working with me a year ago so, so to now and kind of like how you're growing and implementing the business strategies. It's one of these things where, you know, maybe if you're just on the fence here or there, or just want to learn, I think you're probably the best person in the space to learn from because it's not only are you getting the knowledge of ACL rehab, you're also getting the knowledge of a patient facing business and then other principles on the back end that people don't even know about. Makes sense. Absolutely. And, you know, just so to illustrate this point even further, right? So I'm providing mentorship, but I, because I know the value of having a good quality mentor, not only clinically, so I did have great clinical mentors to elevate my clinical skill set and get me good results with my patients and right network myself. But I also have yourself, Brandon, as a business coach where you are my business mentor and I've seen that pay dividends as well. So this just really highlights the fact of having good quality mentors and whatever avenue you want is always going to be worth the investment if they are a good quality mentor. Yeah. And that's something too, where if you guys are working with somebody who's just taking your money and not providing value for you, leave, work with someone else who puts people first. <laughs> it's one of the biggest things, things here. I, I know John does this. Additionally, how many C you have your course to CEUs as well, right? Yeah. So, so I have an ACL, it's called the ACL from A to Z online course, and it truly is an ACL mastery course. So I basically take you from surgery or actually pre-surgery all the way to return to sport and beyond, highlighting every single step of the way, all the milestones, the interventions, the assessments, um, the whole nine laid out. 
barriers, considerations for different graphs, you know, exercise progressions, prescription sample programs and everything. So that course is worth eight CEUs and it's all a self-paced online course, which is actually a part of my 10 week mentorship that I'm about to launch within the next month. All right. And then right now you're also, I know you're also using our DVD Premier systems to get things up and running. Um, would you say that right now there is anywhere for people to find you? We can put the link around here. Or should we get, actually let's shout out your Instagram first. What's your Instagram? Absolutely. So my Instagram where I do most of my education for a physical therapist is my name. So John Call PT, which we can link below. I have my other Instagram, which I do virtual uh, ACL coaching. This is targeted more towards patients who have had an ACL surgery. That's ACL.rx. Um, and that's where you can pretty much find me. That's my main hub. Okay. And then right now, are you, do you giving away any free guides or anything like that? Yeah. So on my PT mentorship page, my John Call PT Instagram page, I have a lot of resources. I have a free returning return to run checklist after ACL surgery. I have a video based on how to properly assess quadriceps muscle strength using a dynamometer. I have one on neurocognitive training. I have one on tendinopathies and I have a few others. So I have a lot of free resources on there. And then for those people who have went under ACL surgery and looking for rehab, I have a ebook, five steps to success after ACL surgery. Okay. So we'll, we'll post whichever one you want. If you send me a link, we'll post that. We'll post all your stuff below this video. I do recommend that if you are looking for ACL clinical mentorship, you contact John in some way. It's something where, you know, if you want to help those surgical patients, do you think conservative or all surgical? Just, I don't know. A uh, mix of both. Mix of both. So whether you want to help, help with surgical patients or conservative management of ACL, something where reach out to John. Um, I've, We've done competitive analysis of the market and it's something where no one else is going to give you eight CEUs. No one else is going to mentor you for 10 weeks. So work with the best or wonder why you're stuck. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I really appreciate the kind words. <laughs> yeah. and this mentorship, like I put it together, like I said, because I really want to give back and I want to really help elevate the standard of care here. Um, and this is for really for PTs who really want to be that go-to ACL expert in their area, who they want to be the guy or that girl who builds their personal brand and gets their name out there because it's going to help them not only get the results their patients deserve, but it's also going to help them, you know, build their brand, get that financial freedom that they want, get that recognition. And it's going to help as many ACLers as you can. It's going to help your community. It's going to help athletes. It's going to help yourself. So I'm really here to really help you accelerate your career, to learn from the mistakes I've made, the trial and error. And I also have a bunch of guest experts in the field who also are going to help me along this mentorship so you can learn from our mistakes so you can get to you know where we are much quicker than we did thanks for coming on john